in the last video we discussed about the reliability analysis we talked about the cronbach alpha analysis which is also known as internal consistency then we talked about how to do the internal consistency or reliability analysis in spss we also talked about the ranges of cronbach alpha and then in the last we discussed about a function known as if item region now in this video we will be talking about how to compute a variable why do we have to compute a variable and what is the use of computing a variable and then we will do it in spss and then we'll learn two of its methods first of all when you're trying to compute a variable it means that when we're using these seven items to measure a variable we cannot use all seven items for our further analysis for example for correlation and for regression and for mediation and moderation analysis so what we do is we try and convert these seven item responses into one that means instead of these seven answers we get one answer which also means that we we are going to make it as one variable now in simple terms what is happening is that you are taking a mean of these seven responses actually at the back end computing a variable means that you are taking a mean of these answers so spss can help us in taking means of all of the respondents separately with a few clicks so theoretically what will be happening 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 and divided by 7 why because we're using seven items so this is what will be happening in computing of the variables but we cannot do it from here for computing the variables we will have to go to this transform tab and then compute variable transform compute variable so once we are going to go to compute variable it is going to show us this different window which i think if you call it a calculator of spss so you will uh, get an easy idea what is this window about so consider this a calculator of spss and this is your data here this is all of your data but this is the window in which you will be performing the analysis or you will be calculating different things by using these buttons or you can manually type here but remember that we will prefer using these buttons because there is a less chance of making a mistake it takes a little bit more of time but you will be making less mistakes as compared to when will be typing manually first of all there's this word which is written target variable now it is saying that what do you want to name your variable so for example our first variable is formalization so what we can do is we can write formalization here this window has the same problem as we talked about about the variable view and the names that it doesn't take any illegal characters so if i just give a space here and try to come out of this window it is going to give me some issue that you cannot use the spaces here so sometimes if it gives you this kind of issue you can go to this label and type whatever you want to type here 
formalization or if you want to go for a complete name. So for now, we'll only be going for the formalization name. Now, what do we have to do? As we talked about that, we will be taking mean of these seven items. So to do that, the first method is to do it with manually, which means you should be knowing what is happening. So let's put a bracket here. And then just by clicking the double click, this thing is going to shift here. Now, put a plus sign and two plus sign F3 plus sign F4 plus sign F5 plus sign F6 plus sign F7. Now that's it. These were the seven items we were using to measure formalization and we want to compute a variable uh, or we want to take a mean of these seven items or the seven responses to one variable's items. Now make sure you go out of this bracket and put a division sign and then divide it by seven. So this is what is happening when you're trying to compute a variable. So just click OK. And now the other window will tell you what you actually did. So let's go now. What SPSS did for you is that it has created a new variable for you. Let's go to this variable view first and see here at the end of this last item, there is a variable known as formalization. So this is what which SPS has created on our computation demand. Now, if we go to this data view and move forward here, it has created the same variable, which is known as formalization. Now what it did is that it took the mean of all the seven responses of formalization of the first questionnaire, then the second questionnaire and then onwards up to 250th questionnaire. So it has taken all the means for us. And now we can say that we have created our variable or we have computed a variable. The next analysis, this variable will be used and not the seven items. So again, if we go back to this compute variable, for example, reset, there is another method, method that you can use. That is that again, we give it a name, formalization. And what you can do is you can go to this function group, click all, which means show me all functions that are available. Come to this window, just type mean and double click it. Now it is asking you of which items you want to take mean of. So if I say F1, but this time I have to give it a comma, F2, comma, F3, comma, F4, F5, F6, F7, and then make sure that you delete this question mark. And once you do this now, you don't have to now divide it because the function is saying that you're taking mean of these seven items. So this is another met method that you can use to take the mean or you can use it to compute your variables. So if you just click OK, I need to change the name. Just put some one or two here or let's put two here because otherwise it's going to uh, copy the same name. So let's just click OK. And we will see that it has created another window. Formalization. Formalization 2. The same thing it has done for the, this variable. It has taken 
the mean of all the responses of formalization. And if you compare, they are the same because we were talking about the same variable. So this is how you can actually compute the variables. And for now, we will be deleting this because we will not be using the same variable twice. So if you want to just see what happened, analyze, sorry, transform, compute variable, or this time we can go to this shortcut. We can go to this compute variable. And this time we are going to do it with employee creativity. So for the next variable, again, we are going to put bracket here. E1 plus EC2 plus EC3 plus EC4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And what we need to do, we need to go out of this, put a division sign, and how many items we were using? We were using 11 items. So this time we will divide it by 11. Here we will be writing employee creativity. That is our variable name and just click OK. Variable name contains an illegal character. This is what we talked about in the last uh, competition of the variable that it doesn't give you a room to put a space here. So what we can do is for now, we can just give it a underscore. So just click OK. And this time, it will be giving you this option. And see if we have created the variable. It, it has given us now two variables, formalization and then employee creativity. Again, in the variable view, we have the formalization and employee creativity. So this is how you can compute your variables in SPSS. Because for future analysis, you will be using uh, these computed variables and not these items. Because these items are only used for uh, reliability analysis. Sometimes you do it for factor analysis. But for your uh, regression, correlation, and the upcoming analysis, you will only be using these uh, computed variables because it has converted these number of items into one type of variable. The same way, we can also go for computing number of other variables. So this is very important function before you go to your main data analysis. In the next video, uh, we will be talking about how to use these videos and how to use these values which have been computed to analyze our descriptive statistics and our correlation, regression, mediation, moderation, and other analysis. Thank you very much for now.